my dojo was right on the corner of Paramount Studios. All the actors used to come to train, Elvis Presley, George Reeves, who played Superman, Steve McQueen came in, and Ed Parker, a Kempo karate master, used to go there and work out also. Ed Parker came into my dojo and he said, we just had a meeting with 200 martial artists of all types. They said this Jim Beck, who was a boxer in the Navy, wrote an article called Judo Karate Bums. It was done in Rogue Magazine, which was very popular at the time. He said he'd give $1,000 to any martial artist he couldn't beat. So Ed Parker said, we want you to represent the martial arts. I said, why me? And he said, because you're the most sadistic bastard I know or anybody knows. And uh, I'm just good looking, I'm not sadistic. So we tried to have it at the Olympic Auditorium and the Athletic Commission nixed it. They said, it's a duel. We had to find another location. And it ended up in 1963 in Salt Lake City, Utah. When I went up to Salt Lake City, I went up there a week ahead of time because it's a mile up to sort of get used to the height. And uh, went into the pool halls and all they did is talk about the fight that's coming up and how they're gonna kill some guy from Los Angeles that's mentally retarded. Now, at that time, they already agreed that Milo Savage, Switch, and Bait was supposed to fight Jim Beck, but Milo Savage was a world-rated boxer and a beautiful guy, a wonderful fighter. Needless to say, it was a sellout, and the fans wanted to see me get the hell knocked out of me. My advisor came with a suitcase full of money, and he had a pencil and paper and says, hey, uh, even money. Just in a matter of uh, a short time, he had $87,000 to bet. Before the fight, we went into Milo's dressing room. He was supposed to wear a judo suit. He wore a tight karate suit filled with grease, and he's putting on brass knuckles. My lawyer who was there said, you're not gonna fight this guy, he's got brass knuckles. And I said, I don't care what he has. You can give him an ax, a sword, a vial of poison in case he's caught. I says, I'll fight him. If I got a, a leg, I'll break it. If I got an arm, I'll break it. If I got a neck, I'll break it. In my mind, I couldn't lose. And Milo's manager said, you can't do any of those kicks. And you can't do any boxing. You're a martial artist. So I gave him my yellow book on judo. And he says, you can do anything in this book. And I says, can I grab him around the neck and choke him? And he said, yes, if you can. First of all, it was supposed to be a five round fight, three minute rounds. When I got in the ring, uh, my coach said, it's to a finish. So take your time and watch out for the brass knuckles. As the fight progressed, Milo hit me in the stomach and I had my judo belt on and broke the belt in half and I says, Oh my God, if he hit me that way in the face, he'd come out the other side. And I said, well, it's time for me to stretch him. So I spun in and threw him down in a nice high judo throw. And I got on top of him and I went to choke him and he put my hand in his mouth and he bit my thumb. And, um, so I said, Milo, you bite me and I'm gonna take your eye out. And I believe if a man has an attitude, you give him an attitude adjustment. So he opened his mouth to say something 
and my hand went out and then I snatched him in a, in a choke. Now, the guy's unconscious and the referee, he lifts Milo's hand and the, and the hand goes down. Then he goes to the other side and lifts it up and it goes down. And he, so he breaks it up and he says, I'm the winner. And so when I was walking to my corner, his body was in the way and I happened to stand on it. And everybody knows that I didn't do it on purpose. But as you can see in the film, he started throwing chairs and cushions at me. When I went the next day to the airport at eight o'clock in the morning, the guy had a bundle of uh, newspapers and he put them up on the board and it said, the headlines, the savage was tamed. Thank you.